Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Prabir Purkayesta, founder editor of News Click. We are here to talk about the Manchester bombing. So Prabir, now that we know it was uh, Salman Abedi, a 22-year-old young fellow from Libya who bombed himself and uh, caused the death of 22 people, young people in Manchester. What do you think was the reason for that? Well, it's difficult to get in the minds of a particular individual. But if you look at the social process, it would perhaps be wrong to call him a Libyan in that sense because he was in UK for a very long time. His father was settled in UK but for all practical purposes, though he did recently go back to Libya. After 2010, he seems to have gone back to Libya with his uh, wife. So yes, we have a specific situation where a group of Libyans in Manchester seems to have been radicalized over a period of time because this is how we are referring to what would be called the Al-Qaeda forces, the ISIS, all of them are being referred to as radical, uh, though in essence they are not. But you really have this kind of groups coming up and you can see that this has come up in France, it's come up in Belgium, it's come up in Germany and all of them then are used by the West in different ways against what they dislike in West Asia, in this case North Africa and destabilizing certain regimes and then we have what's called a blowback. Of course, the death of young people anywhere or people for that matter is really unfortunate. But the point is that we cannot lose sight of the fact that there is a war that has been unleashed by Western powers in West Asia, in North Africa against regimes they don't like. And they have used all kinds of instruments for their larger game of regime change. A lot of these people whom they're using there then come back home and act essentially the way also they do in these countries. So we had Charlie Hebdo, we had for instance the bombing that we saw in Paris where the stadiums were attacked. We have also uh, other uh, musical events which took place again in Paris which were attacked. And now we have an event which was young people, young singer, and that's been attacked in this particular way. But I think we shouldn't lose sight of the larger picture that this particular group which has is probably implicated in this young man's blowing himself up is also the group that the U UK intelligence agencies used earlier against Gaddafi and also after 2011 supported them in the various activities they were doing, including, of course, the change of regime, killing Gaddafi and so on. So I think this is a larger lesson that we have to learn, which unfortunately the media is not focusing on, so people are not getting this part of the story. There has also been a massacre at Brak al Shati, an air base in Libya. So this, uh, this massacre, the attack on Manchester, uh, do you think this is, this is an impact of the what are called the radical Islamist groups? Well, also it's very interesting that the massacre you talked about has virtually been blacked out in all the papers. The media hasn't talked about it. It seems 74 people were killed. Most of them were unarmed. There were civilians like cooks and other people. Even the airmen who had been killed were unarmed. They were shot in the head, ties, uh, uh, arms tied and so on. So this Official toll has been from 74 to 150, we don't know the numbers fully, but nevertheless it's a really a large massacre. It has no, absolutely no traction any in any news, while Manchester becomes almost ubiquitous in the way it has been splashed about. But what are the links? The issue is that Libya has a situation of civil war. We have different parties contesting for control of Libya. And in some of these, we have Al-Qaeda forces as well as ISIS forces on the one side. This particular case, the massacre seems to have been done by forces of the government, which is being backed by the United Nations, really by Western powers. While you have the uh, what is called the, the government of national, the General National Congress, the GNC, which has its liberation, uh, the Libyan National Army. Uh, which is really the key element of the GNC, which is the other side. Now, the, Liber the Libyan National Army is headed by Haftar. Haftar, as you might be aware, 
was a CIA asset who was brought into Libya to fight against Gaddafi, who later on wanted Libya to be united and therefore played a role in trying to unify all, unify all sections and became person non grata of the West, which wants, it appears, it wants Libya to be divided and therefore much more amenable to control by external powers and ultimately the oil company. They don't want an united Libya, which Haftar really wants, and he believes that without militarily controlling Libya, one section controlling Libya, this cannot happen. So the uh, government that the United Nations and the Western powers back, it seems they have a whole bunch of forces which are Islamic, Islamists, which have been a part of the Al-Qaeda earlier, uh, in fact the Libyan Islamic Fighters, fighters group, which is the one which this young man was supposed to be a part. Father, whose fa his father was very much a part of this particular group, involved in assassination attempts against Gaddafi. That seems to be also a part of this kind of formation. And let's not forget, the Libyan Islamic uh, Fighters Group has been delisted as a terrorist group by the United States. Now, this is the compl complexity of the situation, that you have these kind of groups which are designated terrorists at one point or time or the other then gets delisted become close allies of the either the uk uh, against gaddafi of the us against gaddafi or against bashar al-assad and that then has what is called the familiar uh, criteria of the blowback starting from afghanistan and even earlier so i think unless we are able to take a position where we try not to play this kind of narrow politics of regime change in order to get or depose governments which you don't like. I don't think we are going to get very far. And this conditions of armed uh, attacks, massacres will continue. The massacre of Brak al-Shati and the Manchester bombing. What are the kind of political forces right now in Libya who are trying to gain power? What is currently happening in Libya? Well, it's clear that the Lib Libyan National Army under Haftar probably is the more dominant force and controls about two-thirds of the country, could be half, it could be two-thirds of the country. This control is not complete. You have uh, probably a very large number of militias, by some estimate even 1,700, num that's the number of militias that are active in, in uh, Libya. But Haftar is certainly the most dominant force in, in Libya today. The other part is the United Nations backed government, uh, government of national accord that's, that's being talked about, led by Shiraz. Now, that government has is an uneasy coalition with a whole number of forces, including essentially Al Qaeda and ISIS forces, in trying to contest against the more dominant military force, essentially Haftar. Now, this is one part of it. The other part of it is that there, there's an international also coalition that is shaping up with uh, Egypt, Sisi, Al Sisi, and with Russia, also supporting Haftar. Don't forget Haftar was a CIA's asset once upon a time. These forces are supporting essentially uh, today uh, Haftar because they believe that the stability of the region demands that Libya has a returns as a unified state. And they see the best bet in that is Haftar. So I think this is the way it is playing out today, that one set of forces do not want Libya to get united again, get back control over its oil wealth, play a role that Gaddafi did in uh, Africa, which was supporting the organization African states, giving it a certain semblance of independence from Western powers. And you have the other side, the Western powers, who would like Libya to stay where it is in a state of civil war, if not under, if not bifurcated into small uh, uh, areas, which they can dominate and then control its oil belt. So I think we are seeing this, this is the forces, these are the forces at play in Libya. And we hope that good sense will dawn on everybody that a situation of war, supporting different kind of war forces, militias, is counterproductive because it leads to then the blowback taking place all across the globe including Manchester, Paris and uh, in various parts of uh, South Asia, for example. Thank you, Prabir. That's all the time we have today. Please keep watching News Click.